Hello and welcome to the channel. So behind me here is my 2012 power wagon that I bought off a government auction. Now up to this point, I've basically gotten the truck back to its stock form. I performed a bunch of maintenance to make sure the truck's going to perform well and is reliable. And I prepared it to accept a camper. Now I have a camper on order and I'm still waiting for it to be built. So in the meantime, I'm preparing the truck for some off-road trips, including driving out in the sand dunes. So I put together what I think are really good options for minimizing the time spent and deflating and inflating tires and for installing and storing an ATV safety flag which is a requirement out in the sand dunes. So uh, that's what I have in store for this video. Let's get started. Now having the right tire pressure is always an important aspect of going off-road but it's especially critical if you're going to be driving on loose sand where you depend on your tire footprint for flotation. Now this truck is going to weigh about 9,500 pounds once I get a camper installed including my gear and passengers. And uh, the street tire pressure for this truck when it's fully loaded is 60 PSI. Now that's way too much uh, pressure to be driving in the sand. It's gonna sink the truck pretty quickly. So I need a way to deflate the tires down to around 20 PSI each. And uh, for this truck, it takes a really long time getting the tires from 60 PSI down to 20 if I'm uh, deflating the tires individually. So I recently picked up a set of these trail head deflators for the uh, power wagon here. Now I'm not sponsored, I bought these with my own money, but I've been using a set of these with my Jeeps for the last 10 years, so I know these to be of uh, good quality. They're made in the USA and they just work really well. When I compare these to the old uh, Chinese mini-built brass style deflators I had before, these work a lot better. They seem to deflate faster, but also they're a lot more accurate. So uh, once I have these calibrated, I've never seen the tire pressure fluctuate more than plus or minus one PSI after I've uh, deflated these tires. When I compare that to the old Smitty Bills, those were several PSI off sometimes. So uh, these are a lot better quality in my opinion. And uh, because there's four of them, I can deflate all four tires at the same time, which again saves me time over some alternatives. Now these are also rebuildable, so uh, when you get sand or dirt inside, you can take them apart and clean them, and even replace the internals. Now they were not cheap, uh, in fact they're pretty expensive, but I think they're going to last a really long time, and uh, they're going to save me time on the trail, so I think the uh, money was well worth it. Now you're going to want to have these calibrated to your desired tire pressure before you go out on your off-road trip. Now to do that, it's a pretty simple process. There's just a little set screw on the bottom here. To uh, decrease your tire pressure calibration point, you turn that screw to the left. And to increase your calibration point, you turn it to the right. So it uh, just takes a little bit of trial and error in deflating and inflating your tires to get these dialed in. But it's a simple process. And uh, it's even more simple to use these. You basically just take your valve caps off, install these one on each tire. And once they get to that calibration point, they shut off automatically. Now I have mine set to 20 PSI, which I found is a good pressure uh, for this truck in soft sand, unloaded. Once I get the camper installed, I'll probably have to recalibrate these to maybe 22 or 25 PSI. Now once all the tires have been deflated, you're going to need some way to reinflate the tires to get back home after a day on the trail. So I'm going to cover my solution for that just a little bit later. Okay, so I thought I'd show you my uh, safety flag installation. I'm going to show this because I think I have a fairly unique way of installing these that I haven't seen anyone else do. And I've been doing this for a number of years using this installation method, so I know it does work. Now, uh, what I have here is just your standard ATV safety flag. It's a seven foot long flag mounted on a uh, just a fiberglass pole here. You have just a plastic uh, flag on the end. Now, typically uh, these are required in sand dune areas, basically anywhere you have undulating terrain where you may not be able to see someone that's on the other side of a hill. These are often required and also a really important safety feature as well. Now when you buy these, typically there will be a large bolt on the end. And what I've done is I just uh, cut that bolt off with a hacksaw and I replaced it with this uh, connector here. Now this is an Accessories Unlimited uh, CB Antenna Quick Disconnect. It comes with both a female and a male portion. I'll show you the male portion later. But basically what I do is I just put the pole inside of this connector here. I fill in the gap with some JB Weld Epoxy. And then around that, I use this product here. This is called a Steel Stick, also by JB Weld. I use this for a lot of different things. It works really well in this application. It helps to sort of uh, solidify that uh, connection point and just kind of reinforce it there. And then I just have uh, the whole thing wrapped up in just some self-fusing silicone tape just to kind of help to, to keep everything together and to help it uh, look a little bit better, basically. Okay, so here's where I mount the uh, safety flag. So I showed you the uh, quick connector. This is the uh, the male side of that, and uh, the, you know the female male come in a package. Uh, I bought it off of Amazon for twelve dollars, 
Now this is a uh, just a generic uh, stainless steel hood mounted CV antenna bracket. Also bought this off of Amazon. It was thirty dollars. It has some double sided sticky tape under here so that it uh, stays put. And uh, there's a it basically just mounts here under this existing uh, uh, bolt. So you just take this bolt out, mount the bracket, and put the bolt back in. So no holes to drill or anything like that. It's uh, really sturdy, and uh, so far it seems to be working out pretty well. Okay, so mounting is extremely straightforward. This guy just pops on here, push this down, rotate it, and it's locked in place, and there it will stay. And uh, when you're done off-roading, you just push back down, and it pops back off. Okay, so once all the tires have been deflated, before I can go back home, I need to reinflate the tires back up to street pressures. I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing that. So there are a couple of things I had in mind when uh, researching the different options for a tire inflation system for this truck. One is I wanted to uh, spend no more than, say, four minutes per tire inflating from 20 PSI back up to 60 PSI. And also, since I'll be using this truck off-road both with and without a camper, I wanted a solution that I could store inside the truck that doesn't interfere too much with rear passengers or take up too much cargo space. Now, initially considered a mobile compressor like this uh, Viair 300P I've been using with my Jeep for a number of years. It's a good solid unit and it'll be small enough to fit underneath the rear passenger seat. But uh, the problem with this guy is uh, filling these tires from 20 PSI back up to 60 took about six and a half minutes per tire. And that's just too much time for me. So I was uh, looking at larger mobile units. They do make uh, larger units that would be a bit faster. But uh, those proved to be uh, too bulky to easily store out of the way. I did also consider a, a CO2 tank as an option for reinflating the tires and uh, that definitely would be the fastest option for inflation times but there's some downsides in my opinion of having a CO2 tank. First of all even the smallest tanks are pretty big and bulky and not easily stored out of the way but there's also some convenience factors here because once the tank is empty you have to refill it and uh, for me the, the nearest uh, gas supply location is about 30 minutes drive away 30 minutes drive back plus the amount of time it takes to refill the tank so I don't think I'm going to be saving any time overall with the CO2 tank. Plus there's an added expense of filling up the tank of about $15 or $20 each time. So uh, the only other viable solution for me was onboard air. And I didn't want a belt driven solution. I wanted to keep it simple. So uh, let me show you what I got. I'm in the uh, rear passenger section of the uh, power wagon. This is the uh, driver's side uh, rear seat. So if I lift up the seat here, then you'll see my new installation. This is the ARB twin cylinder compressor. I had a few options for installation. I could have put it under the hood, but I was concerned about heat. I could have put it underneath the bed, but I was concerned about getting uh, water or mud on it. So here it's uh, nice and out of the elements. Uh, it seems to be getting plenty of airflow. It doesn't make contact to the seat at all. Now the uh, mechanical installation was pretty straightforward. I happen to have some L brackets on hand. These are just standard L brackets that I've coated in uh, plastic dip because uh, paint doesn't stick to uh, uh, galvanized metal. And then I uh, finished it off here with these uh, uh, roofing screws again i just happen to have these on hand so the installation uh, went uh, pretty quick and easy now the um, the power connections took a little bit more time you know i didn't have enough uh, cable to uh, reach all the way back here so i had to extend the power cables with some 10 gauge wire and i had to cut the uh, the connectors off in order to feed the uh, cable up through the uh, floor so underneath the compressor there's a hole about this big that had a uh, plastic cap on it i took the cap off fed the, uh, the cables up through uh, that hole and sealed off the hole with some silicone and then had to uh, solder the, uh, the cables back into place uh, with the uh, connector. So that took a little bit of time, but uh, not a big deal. And over here is my power switch. So I just have this connected directly to the battery so that everything is back here uh, nice and convenient. Now I got this little uh, bracket here from Amazon. It cost about $12 uh, to mount the switch. Now over here I've installed a uh, swivel, so this is just a, a quarter inch MPT uh, standard uh, fitting uh, male to female, but it has a swivel on it so this can move around. I can pretty, pretty much put this at any angle. And then I've installed this in a 90 degree bend. Now this is a pretty interesting coupler here. This is made by Rapid Air. It has a little uh, release button on the side. And the way this works is you push it in one time and that releases any pressure that's built up in the coupler. And then you push it one more time and uh, the, the uh, male coupler uh, pops out. So this is just a 30-inch leader hose. On the other end of this leader hose, underneath the seat and uh, behind the seat, is a T. So from that T, I have uh, two branches, one going to the uh, passenger side and another hose on the uh, driver's side here. And uh, what I'm doing there 
is I have, uh, again, these uh, rapid air couplers installed. I have one on each side. So what this does is it allows me to uh, very quickly and easily connect up to these uh, couplers on either side of the truck. Now I still have some space here in front of the uh, compressor. And what I'm doing with it is I'm installing my, my hose and my uh, inflator. Everything fits here nicely. It's all in one place, nice and convenient. It doesn't uh, make any contact with the seat. And I can still access everything even when the seat's down. I can turn the unit on and off and I can pull the hose out without any trouble and uh, connect to these uh, couplers on the side here. And uh, if you look under the seat here, that's where the, uh, the hose is laying all the way across the truck there and uh, over there by the door. Now when the unit's not in use, I'll have this hose uh, tucked back uh, behind the seat there where it won't show. Okay, Ava, how do you feel about having the compressor installed right up under your seat? It's noisy. Okay, so I've used the ARB twin compressor quite a few times now, and so far I'm really happy with the results. I'm able to reinflate these tires from 20 back to 60 PSI in about 3 minutes and 23 seconds, which is fast enough for me. Now, I opted to keep the install simple, and I did not install an air tank with the uh, compressor, but that's something I may consider later on adding in the future. Now, even without an air tank, I'm getting enough airflow to drive this little air blower attachment here, which helps me get sand out of the truck after a day at the beach. So that's another added benefit of this compressor. Now, I also think that the uh, compressor is uh, pretty quiet. It may be a little noisy for the rear passengers, but when I compare it to other compressors I've had, overall it's uh, pretty darn quiet. And it seems like I'm getting enough airflow with the compressor being under the seat like that. So uh, overall, I think it's a really great solution. The only downside that I can see is the cost. It's definitely not a cheap solution, but it is a one-time cost, and I expect the compressor to last a really long time. So uh, hopefully this was uh, useful, and as always, thank you for watching. Thank you.